Justice Sotomayor. Justice Kagan. Um, Mr. Fletcher, when I read your brief, I had the sense that you and General Olson, Colorado, parted ways on on, on um, some matters. And I'll just uh, on uh, my hypothetical. God blesses this union. I thought that you might fi find that more difficult than General Olson. And I'm wondering if I'm right about that, and uh, and if I am right, why, and what that says about your argument generally. So let me give you the answer I give today. I'd start with just the same observation that General Olson gave you, which is that I think there are free exercise clause issues might come into play. I'll put those to the side because this is a speech case, right? And I think what that pushes on is can the person who's providing services credibly say, I'm not denying service just because of status. I'm denying service because there's some message that's not just tied to status that I'm not willing to speak for anybody. And to me, some Gay marriages are wonderful to take the uh, uh, religion right. out of it. Right. So obviously, Ms. Smith can say, I will not make any wedding website for anyone that says gay marriages are wonderful. She can refuse on that ground. Colorado agrees. We agree. Right? Right. And I so guess the God bless this union was, uh, was supposed to be so that it would be she would be like perfectly fine with saying it for some couples and not fine with saying it for other couples. Correct. Yes. And I, I guess I, it's, it's a harder case. Uh, you know, I think it's one of the reasons why this case is frustrating is because we don't have any concrete facts. I think my inclination on that case is that I think she has a strong argument to say, really, that is making me send a different message because of the context. It's not a literal test. It's not just are the words exactly the same, right? We acknowledge that context matters. And so in a case like that, I think she has a much stronger claim to say, if Colorado applied its law to make me say that, and I, I think it's far from clear that Colorado would, then it wouldn't be imposing the sort of incidental burden the court saw in FAIR. Then it's imposing the sort of direct burden you saw in Hurley, and the analysis looks very different. Yeah, so what you said is part of what frustrates me about this case, because, you know, I guess my view when I'm trying to think up hypotheticals for myself is a little bit, it depends. On the first set of hypotheticals I gave, I would come out one way. And on the second set of hypotheticals I gave, I hope I'm not giving too much away, I think it's much tougher, and I might come out the other way. And, and it really depends on the facts and on what exactly Ms. Smith is being asked or compelled to do. And that matters. And we have a case without any of that in it. And what should I do with that? So I think you should take the case as it comes to you. And as it comes to you, it's Ms. Smith saying, I want to post a sign saying, I will not provide any websites for any same-sex marriages. That's Pet App 7A. Categorical rule. Categorical rule based on status. And at pages 303 to 304 in the, of the joint appendix, which General Olson referred to, that's the relief that she's seeking, how she's framed her claim. What she wants is an injunction that says you Justice can't- Justice Gorsuch says we don't want to do things based on relief because courts are in control of relief. So take out that part of your, I mean, whether he might be right, he might not be right, but would it matter if we took that out? I, I, don't, I don't think it would, because what I heard Ms. Wagoner say this morning when she was asked about what her client wants to do is that the services she'd provide are not limited to the ones that are described in the stipulations. She would provide something that wasn't so customized, as long as it was to an opposite sex couple, but she wouldn't provide it to a same sex couple. That is what she is asking the courts to validate. And I think the court can take that claim as she presents it and say, on that level of generality, she is not entitled to pre-enforcement relief. But I think it can also do, to, because I recognize there are harder questions out there, it could and should do what it did in Holder versus Humanitarian Law Project and Doe versus Reed and say, in rejecting this facial challenge, in part, or I'm sorry, pre-enforcement challenge, in part because we need more facts and we don't have them, we are not foreclosing the possibility that there's narrow relief in future cases with concrete facts. Uh, last question. Um, you said to Justice Jackson that you didn't want to belabor the point, but her hypothetical is exactly the kind of hypothetical that you're concerned about. Uh, uh, you must have done many moots of this case and thought of many hypotheticals. What are your two ones that you're like <laughs> killers? If we rule for Ms. Wagoner and her client, what happens? Give me two hypotheticals. That's a lot of pressure on my mooters. Um, <laughs> my, my favorite one is this court's decision in Runyon versus McCrary, which was about a school that wanted to exclude children of particular races. And it said, the reason we want to do this is because segregation is important to our beliefs, and that's what we want to teach. And this court said, you are free to teach segregation in your school, but you can't act on that belief by excluding children of particular races. And I think, this is a private school, obviously, and I think if petitioners are 
right, that case comes out differently as long as the school can come in and say, when we teach, we are expressing messages, and those messages change when we express them to students of different races. I think that's very troubling. And I guess I take Justice Alito's point that I do not mean to equate those who have different views about marriage to racists, but the reason why I rely on those hypotheticals is because this court's First Amendment jurisprudence does not distinguish between views we find odious and those we respect. The same principles apply in both cases, and if the principles lead to unacceptable places when we consider them in light of odious views, then I think we have to reject those principles even in a case where we sympathize with and respect the views. Thank you.